lost, soot-covered America and the souls strewn across. Faulkner, about the holy mud and dilapidated buildings of an ancient south in London, wrote about dogs, dogs fogging in the cold. But Mac wrote that Williams wrote about cats. Me, I write about women, and sometimes they move all smooth and liquid silk, and occasionally they burn and swallow everything when they bat their eyes or throw their hips. But sometimes they're sunsets, they're static in memory, and the moon rolling heavily across the vacuous night. And cars, all cold and metal, with aggravated headlights streaming through the streets. Sometimes they're the streets, and the tears and the mystery strung out on rosaries wrapped in withered hands, and eyelashes and cement trucks, and traveling miles and loving in all sorts of elements with wild properties. Sometimes they're stars, and sometimes they're the drunk sciences, or religions and faith and frenzied dance, or nine to fives and poor lighting. And sometimes, most times, they're the dry dust kicking up from the dry earth. But mostly, they're the nameless space between. Me, I write about women. I have a habit of uh, owning late model Crown Victorias and driving them until they burst into flames. One of them was named the Midnight Smooth, and uh, this is the eulogy for the Midnight Smooth. I named you, but then you became mythic, catching cold sun on the backside of the Continental Divide and Angelic Coast, growing brave, holding road beside countless cliffs all over, all over America. A woman you loved hard and fast. Unshakable, straight, never mistaken when I couldn't drive a true arrow. Just eight-cylinder power and jet-black faith against enemies arrayed in battle. That hydrant, that snowbank, that mailbox, that Chevy Blazer never stood a chance against your Detroit metal and your old romantic soul. Yeah. <laughs> this is about a, uh, a nurse I met in an AA meeting. It's called Angel and Gravity. I met him in the rooms with burnt coffee or earlier wiping the asses of invalids on the fourth floor of community with a bad attitude. He must have had a graying soul patch or a salt and pepper mustache and he said the only purpose we have on this planet is to help others. And that's when Gary or Greg started with the cocaine working doubles to ease all the suffering on the fourth floor of community, all those sick, all those dying on respirators with feeding tubes and dementia and traction on their fractures and the pain management meds. The booze would bring him down so he could sleep with the cocaine in his veins and the gray mustache and the hair part on the right side and the masses suffering in the fluorescent lighting. And that's how I met him in the rooms with burnt coffee. <laughs> this is about someone else's night. They told me this story. I wrote the poem. It's called In the Voice of Whom It Is For. I walked in the rain. I walked in the rain thinking of all the glass symbolism it had as a device in hundreds of years of literature. I walked in the rain, I walked in the rain and hoped all its baptismal qualities were real and concrete and powerful enough on these sin-stained parts. I felt the textures of feminism as it soaked through my hair, running as electricity and lines of least resistance over my skin. I hated the wind for a moment. The rain was my tears and yours and the tears of children and parents and grandparents of refugees and of soldiers in green khaki. I wondered if there was anything, if there was anything left at all, left for this rain to wash out. I'd already washed it all out, bleached my hands, killed the ghosts, the ghosts, the stains. Then when the rain was all thought out, when the rain was all thought out, I knelt. I knelt in a gazebo, the gazebo at the end of the rain. And there in the gazebo at the end of the rain, when the rain was all thought out. There in the halo of three cities and the image of a horizon and the mark of man set against creation. The world was finally a prayer. And I was a raindrop, forming about the dust of it. <laughs> this one came from. It's called Romance of Fog. <laughs> we sit heavy in the fog as laden tankers in morning estuaries watching breaths mingle make love with all the infinite atmospheres so temporarily textured. And the scene has me thinking if my breath can be the air and its moisture and the fog can be hers then John was right and I am she and she is we and we are all together. Tankers and estuaries and breaths and lovers and dancing barefoot toes mingling amongst mud and themselves in breaths. I'm on time, Mark. How about uh, three more minutes? Sounds good. This is about a kid I used to surf with. So here's this preacher running youth groups and building skate parks in New Brunswick I knew from carnival days and sunrise surf sessions. 
He wandered just too far from the path, found Jesus in the mushrooms, let his hair and beard grow long forgetting. The world doesn't need like a savior for the freedom and the fearlessness our moral high ground affords, but women always will, and Mary Magdalene stares from across the bar from above a gin and soda, and that doesn't make his father, the broker, feel any better. And the preacher understands his parents never wanted him to do the right thing. They just wanted to teach him to, then get blown off. And the preacher and I catch four-foot glass A-frames once in a while. I ride a 9-6 single fin log. He rides a retro 20 fish. And there's only room for one man and God to pull into the pocket as an orange sun brings the wind. All right, and I'll end with this one. This one's about uh, the backs of books in the bookstore. It's called Still Shots. All these black and white still shots of mid 20th century authors in their late 20s, always in their late 20s, always, always in their late 20s, <laughs> always reclining in their late 20s, help me confuse them with each other, interchangeable in black and white still shots under that exact same haircut, that exact same haircut. And every one of them, their eyes seem to wrestle with the thought of the dream of some great American novel. Except Hemingway. He is always a mountain and a beast, with the little bits of madness readable in his cheekbones and unpressed shirt, with his beard and cigarette smoke, and those drunk, drunk eyes without peace. Thank you.